Hello and welcome to the garden. So I'm undercover today and I want to do just a little bit of planting. But first I need to do some weeding. I've got some old aubergine plants here. There are one or two small aubergines on them. I will pick those and then pull the plants out. And then the only thing I've got left here in the polytunnel are some rather sad looking cabbages. So these are some Napa cabbage. I planted 15 of these a while back. And you can see perhaps that there's a gap here. I lost one plant there. I've lost a second one in another spot. And a third is looking pretty sad. I've got one here that has gone to seed. So that's going to be useless. And then you can see on some of these others that they've been attacked by caterpillars. Some of these leaves, well, there's, there's just nothing left of those. And then on others, we've just got a few holes. This is not so bad. Now, I'm not sure exactly what those caterpillars were. They're not the usual cabbage whites. They're pretty easy to identify. These were, I would have said they were black caterpillars, though they might just have been particularly dark brown. Um, it's possible that they are cabbage moth caterpillars. I understand from a, a little bit of reading that they can appear in all sorts of different colors. They're usually sort of brownish color, but they can be almost black. And these definitely looked pretty dark. So it's possible that it's cabbage moth. Maybe it's something else, but I found a few of them on here and yeah, they've caused quite a bit of damage. So what I did recently was spray these with some BT. Normally I just, I just net and, and that keeps the, the cabbage whites away and it keeps the pigeons away. And, and that's then fine. But obviously something had already gotten to these. So I got hold of some Bacillus thuringiensis, some BT and I, I mixed that up and, and gave these a quick spray. So if there are any caterpillars left on here, any that I, I didn't spot and couldn't pick off, then that should deal with those. Um, like I say, I've lost, I've lost three plants out of the 15 already. A few of those that have been hit the hardest with the caterpillars are looking pretty sad. I've lost one that's bolted. So I'm not doing too well with these Napa cabbage. Um, that's a little bit disappointing. I was looking forward to these, but never mind. I, th there's nothing I can do about it now. I'm just going to leave them here and, and, and I get what I get. It's, it's not a big deal. So um, I'm going to leave those alone, but the rest of the place just needs to sort of tidy up and a bit of weeding. I'm just in the greenhouse temporarily while I take a look at some garlic that I want to plant in the polytunnel. So I've got two different varieties here. I got these from the garlic farm. One is Provence and the other Carcassonne. Now, now these are the replacements. Some of these bulbs were not good when I got them. Um, 
I was quite unimpressed with what I received to start with and to their credit they did send replacement bulbs without quibbling I think these must be the replacements these are a little bit soft to be honest the uh, bulbs that I planted in a previous video the ones that went outdoors they were rock hard fantastic condition they came from seeds of Italy but these are not as good for sure um, that one's all right you can see this is one of those that I had a problem with this is all decayed and squidgy in here this is absolutely useless I don't I mean you, you can't use a bulb like that I don't know if there are any cloves on there that will be salvageable yeah maybe three on the outside but this bulb is this bulb is dreadful now oh, these are a little bit soft too yeah and and here you might be able to make out that i've got mold in this part of the bulb and yeah, it's not good either these these cloves are completely soft so with the replacements that they've sent I'm sure I've got plenty of cloves here as uh, as many as I, I expected to to get but I think even the even the good ones are th a little bit on the soft side and I really don't like that I, this is this is not great quality garlic to to my mind um, they haven't been cleaned up very well there's lots of soil remaining on them I don't know I, I shouldn't have mold and, and decaying bulbs here these should have been these should have been thrown away if they're in bad condition so no I'm, I'm not that impressed with the garlic farm to be honest it's a little bit disappointing I'd expected their garlic to be to be great but never mind I just need to go through these now break them apart with as much care as possible and then separate the cloves same business as usual really um, I will keep the best ones oh, these are not great they're a little bit soft I don't like it um, I'll keep the best ones any of the small ones from the middle I'm not going to bother with those I mean that's 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 too small to plant it's you're not going to get a good bulb from that compared with if you compare those two this one's not really worth bothering with that's what I want to plant so here's an example of one that looks all right superficially but it feels just a bit soft and if I peel this skin away well you can see that is disgraceful that is not going to grow it's all brown and moldy yuck yeah that's pretty poor only three cloves from that bulb although they are good sized cloves still three from one bulb is a bit rubbish i think they must have been more careful when they picked the replacement bulbs because these unlike unlike the others are rock hard just as they should be and this particular variety this is the Provence this is produced really good size cloves um, you don't get as many of course per bulb but these are good sized bulbs um, I'm hoping to get some good stuff from this next year So 
So I've given this place a reasonable weeding. It's not perfect by any means, but I think it will do. And I've given it a quick rake over. I'm not going to do anything with the soil right now. This will get uh, a layer of organic matter next spring, I suppose, just before I plant the tomatoes, peppers and aubergines that will go in here then. For now though, I want to get some of this garlic planted and I'm going to do that around the outside of the tunnel. I've got these canes here which I tied the tomatoes into. I'm leaving those where they are and I think I will just plant uh, two or three cloves between each cane. Um, not entirely sure yet on the spacing, but I'll plant one variety on one side and, and the other on the other side. So, I mean, the soil's a little bit rough here, and it's a little bit dry at the margins because of course, this has been watered in the past with the soaker hose. The soaker hose isn't on now. So this, this soil here hasn't had that much water. I will have to water these after I've planted. Um, so obviously the tomatoes will be going here next year and they'll be going in before the garlic comes out. So maybe I plant about here. So I could just put two here. That would give them lots of space. Or then, or then I could put probably I could probably get three in there. Okay. Garlic grows fine around tomatoes. They're they're good companions. So there's no problem with that. It's just I don't want to disturb the garlic too much when I plant the tomatoes in front. So I'll try and keep the garlic back a little bit. Not not too close obviously because I need they need room for their roots and their and the bulbs to develop here. So I think three something like that would probably be okay. So as usual with the garlic, I want to make sure that's planted deeply enough. It needs to be a couple of inches of soil above the, above the tip here. So that's sort of how the clove wants to sit in the ground. So I use the dibber to make those holes and then I can put the garlic down the bottom nicely. That's a bit too deep. There we go. Right, and I can do that all the way along. So it might seem slightly odd to be planting the garlic in the polytunnel because it's well known that garlic wants a period of cold weather for the bulbs to develop properly. The cold encourages the cloves to divide and obviously you need that in order to form proper bulbs for next year. However, even here in the south, my experience has been that the garlic planted under cover has produced larger and better bulbs than those planted outdoors. Now, last year I only had the outdoor crop. This tunnel went up in, I think, April, so far too late for planting garlic. And I, I could have used the greenhouses, but, but I didn't. Um, in our previous tunnel, the garlic always did really well. So I am hoping to get good bulbs from here. And of course, I'm hoping that through the winter they get sufficient chill here for those to divide properly. We've never had a problem with it before, but that's, that's, that's the idea. 
So there's, there's some benefit for sure to being outdoors and exposed to the colder weather. But I think you get much better growth on the plants, especially sort of late winter and, and early spring when the outdoor garlic is, is really struggling to get going because the, the temperatures are still pretty poor. In here, the temperatures, daytime temperatures will be much better. The growth will be better. So by the time they start to bulk up, they've got a lot more top growth and consequently, I think you get better bulbs or potentially better bulbs. Anyway, we will find out what happens next summer when I start to lift some of these bulbs. Well, I've gone a little bit mad with the garlic this year because I managed to put in 66 cloves in the polytunnel here and there are still more to go and I think I will try and get those into one of the greenhouses but even so that's quite a lot of garlic plus I've got the outdoor crop as well. Um, next I've got some rather sad chicory plants actually they look fine there's nothing wrong with these it's just that they've been in these pots for far too long and that's a really bad thing for chicory on to even chicory they they all form a substantial taproot and you can start them in modules and pots and so on but ideally we want to move them on pretty quickly before that taproot gets compromised they've been in these pots i mean they're a good sized pot but they've been in here for some weeks longer than they should be. I should probably have planted these out a good three weeks ago. So they are undoubtedly pot bound. I've probably messed up that taproot a bit, but never mind. I didn't, I didn't get round to it. And this happens, actually it happens quite a lot with me, but sometimes this happens and there's no reason not to plant these just because I've made a bit of a mistake with them. So I'm just going to lay them out in here and get them in the ground. Well, there's something wrong with one of these plants. This is the variety I'm trying to grow. This is Treviso chicory, so it's the tall sort. This one looks a little bit squat and I have a fancy. This is a rogue seed of the, the round headed sort and I'll show you why. So in the old bathtub here that had the squash in during the summer, I've got some spare plants of Treviso from a previous sowing. This is the correct one, so are the others, but you can see this is one of the round sort, and well, it's just being nibbled a little bit there, but it's starting to form a nice, a nice head, and these are picking up their proper winter color. But you can see that this is an odd one out and that is definitely not the same type as, as these. So, so that's a rogue seed and that's why I'm rather suspicious that that other one may also be a rogue. It's not a problem. This is very nice chicory as well. I prefer this shape, I think, but it's no problem at all. Well, I've got a dozen of these that will fit in here nicely in a block. I want to give these plenty of room, I think. These can form a fairly chunky plant as they mature. So the soil in here is nice. It's not like the borders outside where they're stony and hard, but they are slightly compact, of course, where we've been walking in here. No, oh, it's not too bad. I'll take a slightly bigger hole, break that up a little bit. Right. Now I'll see if I can get one of these out. Take off some of these old leaves, they're no good. It will not want to come out of this pot. Oh, no, that's all right. Ah, it's not too bad. It's a bit pot bound down the bottom, but it's not as bad as I thought, so. Right, in you go. I'm not adding anything to the soil. I don't think there's any need, especially for these. There we go. Right. 
we get the spacing right. And I'm not taking any notice of the soaker hose position. It's um, it's not on at this time of year, so I'll just ignore it. The soil's nice and rich from where we put the organic matter on in the spring. Still lovely. Worms, that's always a good sign. Yeah. So. Oh, that's really not too bad. I thought these were going to be a lot worse. There's no sign of the tap root there. Um, that undoubtedly has been messed about by being in these pots for too long, but oh, um, they'll be okay. So I've given that a good soaking in here, including all the way along the boundary where the soil was pretty dry. And I shouldn't have to water too often in here during the winter. Maybe I'll come and check on it just once a week or something like that. It won't get too dry in here now, especially now that the doors are more or less closed. I tend to leave a small gap at, at one end just to give it a bit of air, but largely this is closed up now. And thanks to the weather, it won't need watering in here too often. So that is it for the polytunnel. There's a small amount of space where I could put one or two further plants, but I will have to do some more planting in one of the greenhouses. It is getting a little bit late now for garlic, but I think under cover, you can certainly put it in up to mid-November. And here in the south, I'm sure I could push that just a little bit further. Um, I've got some lettuce and what else have I got? Some oriental greens. And I will find time, hopefully, to get those into one of the greenhouses. But they're not ready for planting right now. They also need to have a bit of a tidy up. And hopefully... I will get to that soon, but that is all for this video. So thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now.